Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about, the title of the video is going to be Fractional Reserve Banking Explained. I can't even believe that I'm about to attempt to tackle this topic, but I'm going to give it a go. I oftentimes encourage people to watch the video Money as Debt. And the reason I do is because it it's the simplest, easiest video slash documentary. It's about 45 minutes long. I'll put a card in the top right-hand corner. But it's the simplest, easiest video I've ever seen to explain the financial system, the issues with our current financial structure. And then once you understand the current financial system and how crazy it is, you will then fully understand why a decentralized cryptocurrency that is part of a trustless blockchain such as Bitcoin is not only a good idea, but absolutely necessary for long-term financial sanity. So let's just talk about this for a moment. And I think that I'm, I'm talking about this because I'm blown away at the amount of cryptocurrency enthusiasts or even investors. I don't think, I think there's a sizable percentage that don't really get the importance of understanding what's wrong with our current financial system and how our current financial system works. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the fractional reserve banking and, and then in my next video, I'm going to talk about the Federal Reserve. Together, the two peas in a pod, and those two things together make our current financial system destined like it was created to literally long-term fail. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and preach gloom and doom and, oh my goodness, the market's going to fall apart tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. But I will tell you that the current system cannot continue. Like, it, it simply cannot continue forever. So let's just tackle one at a time. We're going to tackle fractional reserve banking. So this all came down here. This gentleman posted, this is on uh, Ivan on text video this morning. This gentleman posted the stock market down 20%. Could put pressure on the financial system. Don't put any money in fiat. Then you can afford to lose. I replied, fiat as in paper money, government issued paper money. I replied, fiat is risky. And I was being a little bit tongue in cheek, just like he was here, I'm sure. And this person responded, yep, fractional banking will show its ugly head soon. Not just fiat, it is much worse. It is debt-based fiat. Cyprus is a good example of what happens without a bailout. People have yet to realize their money in their bank accounts have already been loaned out. And I replied, I'm blown away that so many people in the crypto space don't know that. I always think, why else are you here? Obviously, they are FOMO, FOMOing on price action, which is why it's so freaking volatile. I think the only reason that uh, cryptocurrencies can fall 70, 80, maybe even 90% is because people do not understand the fundamentals, at least for Bitcoin anyway. So here we go. Fractional reserve banking explained. This is going to sound lunacy. Let me see. I'm going to show just a part of this video here, and then I'll give an explanation. By the way, this is a very small excerpt out of the video, Money as Debt. Money as Debt. So you need to go watch that video. I had a card up earlier, but you need to go watch this video. Not created by the Mint. It is created in huge amounts every day by private corporations known as banks. Okay, pay attention here. Most of us believe that banks lend out money that has been entrusted to them by depositors. Easy to picture but not the truth. In fact, banks create the money they loan, not from the bank's own earnings, not from the money deposited, but directly from the borrower's promise to repay. Okay, banks create money based off the borrower's promise to repay. Banks create money based off the borrower's promise to repay. That's this section right here. So I'm going to explain, just in case you don't know this. So, most people think, I want to buy a car. I'm going to go to the bank and borrow money. Maybe the car has a value of $15,000. The bank will hold the car as collateral, or at least hold the title to the car as collateral, and I will pay them back payments. The car is valued at you know, $15,000. Maybe they'll loan me $10,000, and I come up with the other five. But I buy the car. I pay them $10,000 with interest. Most people assume this is how it always works. There's some sort of collateral and the bank gives money against that. Like if you go to the bank and you borrow $1,000, most people assume that the bank has either $1,000 in cash 
were $1,000 in collateral to loan out against. And what they think that the bank does is they think that the bank takes person A's money and holds it in a CD or a savings account and pays them you know, 1% or less in interest. And because they're holding that money, person B comes along and needs a loan for $1,000. So they lend out person A's money to person B for 1000 bucks plus interest. And so they get 10% interest. Most people assume that the bank makes money on the spread of the interest. Charge one person 10%, pay another person 1%, you make 9%. But that's an over over exemplified example that it doesn't work like that at all. It's actually far more crazy. And it's fractional reserve banking. So it would make sense to most people that if the bank has an asset that they could loan you a percentage of that asset in a loan, they're guaranteed or their their safety is the asset. But what most people don't realize is the moment that the banks make a loan to you, they can you that loan is now considered collateral, and that collateral is just as hard of a collateral, or it's just as real. That that collateral is just as real as the fifteen thousand dollar car. So when the video said banks create money out of thin air based off the promise to prepay. So this loan, which has not even been prepaid yet, on the bank's book, legally is considered an asset, a physical asset, basically, that they can loan against, or a real asset they can loan against. So not only can they loan this money that they don't have, but they can loan it up to nine times. So we got seven here, but they can loan it up to nine times. You heard that right. They can take this $10,000 and they can loan 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. How do they loan it? They literally just type numbers on a screen, put numbers in a bank account. Literally, this is fractional reserve lending. This is how it works. Look it up. This is an oversimplified version, but this is exactly how it works. Fra- that's why it's called fractional reserve lending. This is the di- this is the the banking system all over America, all over Europe and practically every other developed country in the world. Fractional reserve lending, meaning they only have to keep a fraction of their reserves against the lending. And the ha, here's proof. Have you ever heard of a run on the banks? What is a run on the banks? It's when people try to get their money out of the bank and they can't get it because the bank doesn't have it. How could the bank possibly not have it? Because they're never required to keep the full amount on deposit. Let me tell you how crazy this is. Hang on a minute. Let me tell you just how crazy this is. This is illegal in any other industry outside of banking. I'll prove it to you. Hold on. So here's the proof. This is full tilt poker. Full tilt poker, if you've been on my channel, you know I used to play poker online. Full tilt poker um, was a company that basically got in trouble. I've not been to this site in so long. They basically got in trouble because when the government shut them down, they did not have enough money on deposit to pay everybody that had put money in. Think about that. They did not have enough money on deposit. Why? Because they had spent it through business operations. Now, here's the crazy thing. It wasn't a problem until the bank government shut them down. And then, of course, they were considered scamming and they had to, you know, somehow or another, they had to make people whole. I don't know what all they did. But the crazy thing is it would have never, ever mattered because statistically, they weren't as bad as this example here of the banking system. The reason banks get away with this is because as long as the economy is going good and it's continuing to expand and people are continuing to borrow money, this is why American citizens are in crazy amounts of debt and literally cannot pay it off because it would collapse the entire economy, the entire economy. Our entire economy exists based off people borrowing more to spend more, to buy more so companies can grow and hire more people to work. Do you get how that works? And then those people earn a wage as employees and they go out and spend more and borrow more. 
th- that's how the whole system works. And so th- the idea is it's, it's basically pretty safe historically as long as people don't lose faith in the banking system or their governments and they don't start trying to pull money out. If everybody starts pulling money out, it's called a run on the banks and the money is not there. Interestingly enough, that's how, where's it at? That's how Full Tilt Poker was running their business. It was probably never, ever going to be a problem because it's not like they were, uh, they had never not paid anybody money that when they were cashed out, blah, blah, blah. But they knew that only a certain percentage of their players were ever going to cash out. Now, I am not taking up for Full Tilt Poker or trying to say they shouldn't have the money on deposit. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just trying to say that they got in a lot of trouble for doing something that is 100% legal and occurs all day, every day in the banking system. You want to know what else is crazy? This I just showed you this at the first level. The banks can borrow $10,000. They can loan out against that up to nine times. But here's where it gets crazy. This whole square is an example of $10,000 loans. There's seven of them. Well, guess what? Who do these seven people owe their loans to? You've got it. They owe it to the bank. Guess who can count this as an entire asset? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times 7,400. Is that 490,000? No, sorry. Seven times 10 is 70,000. And they can loan out against that uh, nine times, right? Yep. So seven thousand dollars, not six hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So this is a seventy thousand dollar. As soon as they make these loans, this becomes a seventy. It's no longer a ten thousand dollar asset. Now, mind you, they don't even got this ten thousand dollars here. Sorry, I got to get this so you can see what I'm doing. They don't even have. They don't even have this ten thousand dollars here. But they can loan again out against future payments because it's considered an asset. And when they do that, it's ten thousand, 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 seventy thousand dollars. Oh, all of a sudden, this is a new asset right here. And this asset can be loaned out against up to nine times. They can let out $630,000 worth of loans based off this. And it it essentially continues. Now, the, I mean, it doesn't continue totally and definitely. And, 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 and I'm oversimplifying this, but please understand that is fractional reserve lending at its essence, at its very core. That's fractional reserve lending. So what is important about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? It stops this. If if there, I mean, it it forces the environment to be an environment that's based off of production and not consumerism. You have to produce products that people want to buy. It creates fiscal responsibility. You cannot print or create more Bitcoins. There's only so many. So you have to have the Bitcoins. It creates responsibility and increase honesty among the banking system. I mean, this is crazy. This is setting us up for a system that has to ultimately fail. Like it, it cannot go on forever. In the next video, I'm going to cover the Federal Reserve and you're on, that's even crazier. That's even crazier. And the Federal Reserve basically does something like this on steroid. Most people don't even know what the Federal Reserve is or why they exist completely. And they don't even know what their purpose is. They don't even know who owns the Federal Reserve. Somebody owns it. They don't even know who owns the Federal Reserve. Let me tell you, it is the most profitable freaking business that exists under the sun. If you like this kind of content, and if you have if you have questions, first of all, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't, don't even hit subscribe. Don't hit the like button. Don't do anything yet. I want to know something. If you understood how fractional reserve lending worked already, and you understood it, and that's why you invested in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, put a comment down below. If you didn't understand it, put a comment down below because I'm just curious how many people didn't understand this. Maybe you heard the term fractional reserve lending, but you didn't actually understand it. Please put a comment down below and let me know. Did you know what this was before this video? And if you did, that's great. It just lets me know that I'm you know, wasting my time on this type of content. I'm just curious how many people actually knew about this. I didn't waste my time because it'll show up in the search engines and other people will find it when they're asking about it. But you know what I mean? I'm, I'm really doing this for my audience. 
my current audience, my current subscribers. So let me know your thoughts on this content. Did you know about this? Also, let me know um, if you like this kind of content or not. Hit that thumbs up icon. Let me know if you do like it. Also, subscribe to my next video. I'm going to put out another video. That video is going to be about the Federal Reserve, as I said before. So stay tuned for that. You don't want to miss it. Make certain that you hit that bell, uh, bell icon as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.